Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Play Legend of the Mystical Ninja on the Super Nintendo. So this is a game that's a uh, pretty fun little side-scroller. It's the first in the, uh, I guess, the Mystical Ninja series that really came out over here in the U.S. Uh, of course, the Goemon series is, you know, pretty big in Japan. It's had a lot of entries, but uh, we've only had, I believe, like three in total over here. This one and the two games from the Nintendo 64. So we were a little limited in the library, I suppose, but... This is a fun game, I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not like super practiced on this, but uh, you know, it should be fine. I'm not too worried about it, but uh, if I just, you know, kind of stumble a little bit here and there, there's good reason for that. I don't just completely suck. Uh, I may be a little out of practice as well. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get this started with one player. No real options to take care of or anything, which makes things pretty simple. And yeah, let's do one player. So you can definitely tell from that opening uh, scene that this game is very lighthearted, very tongue-in-cheek, you know, it definitely doesn't take itself seriously. And there are a couple of things I love about that scene, like, like, uh, well, Kid Ying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably end up calling him Goemon, because, well, that's who he is. Uh, but for some reason it got localized to Kid Ying and Dr. Yang, when it's pretty obviously Goemon and Abyssumaru, you know, anyone who knows the series pretty much knows that. But, uh, you know, like, his facial expressions were hilarious at certain points. Like, he was literally disgusted with Abyssumaru at some points. Anyway, let's go ahead. I guess we can talk about what kind of what we're doing here. Uh, it's a good chance to, because I generally spend the first little part of the game here, just before we do much of anything, just kind of grinding for money. You can see I'm picking it up when some of these enemies die. Uh, I want to get maybe, like, four or five hundred just to start things off. We're going to stop by the store and buy a couple things. And uh, it turns out throwing money is actually pretty much your best attack as well. So, you know, you use money for just about everything in this game. And uh, you've also seen we've had a couple different kind of weapons pop up. Uh, I started out with this really kind of short pipe, then it was a bigger golden pipe, then it was yo-yos. Uh, oh, got hit there. Um, you may have seen some of these uh, kind of like silver cat dolls dropping. Like there, I just picked one up. That will upgrade your weapon if you're not at max, which is the yo-yo for uh, Kid Yang here. Alright, so we've got a, uh, you know, a few hundred here. We're doing alright. I'll probably stop by the store pretty soon and uh, maybe just get the rest off screen. Also, you can uh, kind of, I guess, pick up that chick and get some money. Uh, I don't know if you're rescuing her or if you're, like, mugging her. It's probably the latter, but... <laughs> alright, so yeah, this is a decent amount of money. We can go ahead and stop by the store. And uh, the first thing we're going to buy here is uh, we're going to take basically the first two items. We may not be able to afford all the pizza. Uh, but we're going to buy a bunch of sandals here. I think we can buy nine. Yeah, and then once we get another one, we're all out. And I'll buy... Uh, I got, uh, we can't actually get on the max. Oh, no, it cost 60 for the last one. I forgot about that. Uh, but basically, what the straw sandals do is in the overhead perspectives, like the town that we were just in, you move faster and jump a lot further. These are basically a necessity to have, really, if you want to survive some of the later town sections. And the pizza will restore your health a little bit if you run out. Okay, so um, that's kind of a good introduction. I mean, they don't really tell you too much about this game. You know, I mean, this is the SNES. This is kind of the old area where they basically just threw you into things and let you figure it out. Uh, we can take, yeah, there's a ton of these guys that want to kill you for some reason. And of course, we can go in like different buildings and stuff. Most of the time, it's just NPCs like this that have literally nothing to say. How are you? And we can just walk out. So, you know, I won't be bothering with most of the buildings. But, um, I guess we can go ahead and continue the game by heading up to the next screen here. And 
And yeah, the uh, the text in this game you could tell is very poorly localized in places. There's one really bad one later on that I'm actually pretty excited to show, but uh, this is kind of a hint to what they were talking about, the ghost lady was causing problems. So uh, you can see it's kind of caused this town to be, I don't know, overtaken by some kind of curse and everyone's kind of like turned into monsters, I guess. And uh, we've lost a little bit of health so we can stop by uh, the restaurant here, which is still open, thankfully. And uh, everything else is pretty much closed though. So if we want, we can uh, get something to eat, spend a little bit of money and uh, recover our health. We only need the basic one. So let's just uh, keep on going here. There's a few other buildings, but like I said before, basically everything's closed here since there's, you know, kind of a curse going on. So, you know, don't want to let a bunch of monsters in or anything. I'm just picking up a few more coins to make sure we're good for the next section. And uh, heading through this door will take us to the uh, first side-scrolling section. Most of the levels in this game are divided up into two sections like this. Uh, you kind of have the town area, and then you have this little side-scrolling part where this is dangerous territory. So uh, from here on out, we're going to be accosted by lots of monsters. So no, it's going to be much tougher from here on out. Also, it's worth mentioning the music in this game is fantastic. One of the best parts about this game. I love it. So you can see I've switched over to uh, kind of throwing money here because it's really your best ranged attack. I mean, it'll fly all the way across the screen and uh, it works really well. I'm going to be using that for basically the entire game. So we can just continue making our way forward here. This first one's pretty simple. You can see there's a lot of kind of different paths you can take. And uh, it turns out there's actually a hidden little secret area. Well, I got hit from above. That also happens sometimes. Enemies coming from off camera to get you and falling from above. All right, I want to jump over here and then hit this thing out of the way and get hit again. Man, I'm not doing too well. All right, but once we come down here, we've entered this little secret area and uh, we're going to be able to get through. And this is a, it's another place where it's basically needed to have sandals uh, because you can jump only this one if you don't. You can jump this if you have like one pair and you can jump this if you have a, you know, a max set. So. Getting that. There was also a gold fortune doll in that pot, which caused our max health to increase and also refill. So yeah, there's a lot of explanation that I'm going to be doing kind of here at the beginning. Uh, we've we've gotten through most of it. We're in the home stretch of this first section now, but you know, from here on out, I'll be able to kind of just commentate on the game as a whole. Uh, but you know, for the first section, it's kind of good to get an idea of what's going on. So just, yeah, one more enemy there, and then we can move on to the next section, the next screen, which is going to be a boss. So this is, of course, the Ghost Lady, and, uh, you know, I actually played Mystical Ninja on the Nintendo 64 before I played this game. Well, that was bad. Um, so, you know, I kind of saw sort of a version of this boss in that game. You know, it's the same type of deal. Uh, it's like a ghost character that's, you know, spits plates and stuff at you. Man, I'm doing terrible. But uh, the throwing gold is a really good idea for this fight because uh, it's really good to do a range. Those plates can hit you pretty easily if you try to just hit them with a pipe. Uh, you know, especially if it's just the level one weapon, that can give you a little bit of trouble. But all you have to do is just keep hitting the plates back at her and you'll be fine. So there's no time to explain. We have to take $100 from this talking ninja cat and hurry to uh, Shikoku Island, go see the cat boss, okay? All right, so he disappears. We take $100. We're gonna need it for the trip, it turns out. And uh, we're sent back here to the main area where you can see the curse has been lifted and everything's back to normal with all the townspeople trying to kill us. That guy will mug some of your cash off of you and unfortunately there's no real way to get it back. So uh, it's just, you know, <laughs> don't get hit by him basically is about all I can say there. Now we could also, uh, well, I was going to say we could use a little bit of recovery, but we can actually kind of pay to get healed when we take our, uh, our trip out of here. So I'm going to wait on that. And we can check out some of these other buildings too. Uh, some of this stuff takes up a pretty large part of the game. Uh, you can see if we want to play some games here, we can if we want, but I'm going to be kind of passing on most of these. Uh, most of these buildings are just kind of mini games you can play in order to get some more money. Uh, I'm not really going to be doing that throughout the course of the main game because I kind of just want to, you know, get through it first. Uh, but I may do kind of a bonus part afterwards showing each of the different games because there's quite a few. It could actually spend quite a lot of time. So we can just continue on through here. We need to uh, basically head to the one section we didn't go to before. Uh, it also might not be a bad idea to stop by the store now and pick up uh, our final piece of pizza. We can only hold three at a time. 
And I may need to also refill uh, some of my sandals. Let's see. Yeah, we lost one. Every now and then when you get hit, they, they kind of have like a little bit of a durability, I guess. So, you know, if you get hit too much, you'll start losing sandals. You can hold nine, though, so it's like really not an issue. I mean, I got hit, a, a, you know, a number of times and only lost one, so uh, it's really not too big of a deal. Ah, I, keep, <laughs> I keep getting hit by the fish. I hate the fish. They're like the worst part of this. All right, so where we need to go is just right in here. This is going to be the travel agency. As the woman says, the text scrolls by a little bit slow in this game, and there's not a whole lot I can really do to speed it up. I'm just gonna ask if we want to go. We get to choose our uh, travel package. The cat gave us a hundred bucks. Uh, if we want, we could go for the uh, luxury pack C. I kind of want to go for pack A because it's the the funniest, but we'll go for B because we could probably use the health recovery a little bit. And uh, if you pick A, you don't get any health recovery. Uh, B is increased by four. C might be to max. But, um, I'm not really sure. It might be six or eight. I honestly, like, pretty much never take it. <laughs> nice. Okay, so yeah, the story is really nothing too big. This is also, you know, it's kind of a common theme among these older platformer games. The story is light, and it's light-hearted as well, so uh, there's nothing really too much to know. We're just kind of setting up for uh, the next zone. So we're getting ready to start up zone number two here, Statue of Cat. You can tell that's probably a little bit kind of brute force translated a little bit, but uh, that's, that's okay, you know, that happens a lot. All right, so right out of the gate here, there's kind of two different ways to go. There's an easier way and a hard way. Uh, you can see this is kind of a dead end, and again, we could check out some of these buildings, but most of them are just going to be kind of worthless NPCs. Uh, something strange about the people at this year's festival. Uh, I assume they're the people with the uh, masks that were kind of dancing around that we've been killing, but, uh, you know, I don't really know the story, like, too well in that regard, so that's just kind of my guess. Alright, so to continue forward, we need to head over to the left. Whoa, not get hit. Uh, there are a few enemies in here, like this guy. I hate that guy. Pretty much anything that can throw projectiles in this game is a, a bit of a pain. And there's a few different types. Those guys, like, kind of have the... Uh, I don't really know what that is they're holding. You can see they can kind of toss, like, these vases at you. And they have, like, a huge hitbox. It's much bigger than it feels like it should be. So, you know, I get hit by those quite a lot, actually. All right, now one of these buildings here, I don't remember exactly which one. Okay, it's not this one. Uh, there's actually a building where you can stop and save, and I'm going to try to find those. So let's hop over the stream here. Uh, that stream, I think you can only hop over if you have, like, uh, max sandals. Like, uh, you know, it's an effect that stacks up to, like, three times. So if you have at least three, you can clear that. And this is kind of the easier way to go. And this building here is just kind of a little minigame place. It's worth showing because there's this giant TV. Look at that. But essentially, you just pay money to play games and you don't get anything for it. So again, I'm not going to be doing that during the main playthrough here. Okay, I believe the uh, save area is at least in this screen. Um, okay, it's not this one. This is the hotel. If we want, you can stay here. Uh, it, it's a little bit more expensive than just, like, eating at a restaurant, so I generally wouldn't advise it. You know, unless a hotel is, like, literally the only thing around. Uh, we can head up here to this screen, and I think there's just a couple... Um, okay, well, this is kind of leading us back, actually, towards the hard path. And uh, this guy here... Uh, he's kind of this uh, judo martial arts master. If we work hard, he can teach us some uh, jutsu. We'll learn some techniques we can use. Uh, I never, ever use these because, if I'm not mistaken, I think they actually use health to activate, which is generally a bad idea in this game. So uh, we're going to be kind of leaving him behind. We've been picking up scrolls from some enemies. Uh, I'll try to point one out the next time I see one. But those are kind of used as power to use those uh, to, uh, I guess, to buy those attacks. You can see there were a couple scrolls there. Uh, I guess you buy them with those scrolls. I honestly don't know. Like I said, I never use them. These samurai guys are super annoying, uh, which is why I said this is kind of the harder path. All right, so the save point uh, might be in this building. It might be in the next one over. Okay, it is in this building. So uh, saving in this game, they kind of keep a diary of your travels, so to speak. 
and um, get through a dialogue here. Do we want to keep a diary? We can say yes. And that'll kind of, uh, it'll give us two things. One, it'll give us this password we can enter if we want to uh, start back from exactly this point again. It'll also kind of save your data uh, inside the game's memory. That's not really mentioned, but uh, you can really just start from here anytime after creating a logbook. So at this point, what I'm actually going to do is, uh, like I said before, money is actually very important in this game. And you can sit there and grind money, you know, you can play games. Uh, all in all, I generally get like, um, I don't know, $12,000, $15,000, which you can see is quite a lot compared to what we have. So what I'm going to do here, it may be a little unorthodox, but I'm going to go ahead and just reset and get through the menu screen. And uh, I'm going to kind of show off the logbook feature a little bit here because I've got a password prepared uh, that'll set us back exactly where we were, but with some more money. So this is part of where the uh, translation is really bad. Uh, it asks us where we want to continue. We can say from a logbook entry, your last logbook remains to continue as it is to input new logbook. <laughs> this is like the worst translation I've ever seen. So we want to input a new one and the passwords, as you saw, are kind of long. So we're going to be speeding this up a bit here. Okay, and then once you enter the last one, you know you did it right if it starts loading. So as you can see, we're exactly where we were. Uh, we've got a couple different things in the item boxes, but don't worry. The store to get those is literally just right down the road here. So uh, basically, you can see I just loaded up this save file to get my money all the way up. This is kind of a password that I just sort of got myself. Uh, I, you know, did a little bit of emulator magic and... Uh, oh, crap. I hate getting... I'm telling you, I hate those guys. They hit me, like, every time. All right, so we can go in this store, and I'll explain what those items are that we've picked up. Um, first off, uh, it looks like only the armor is sold here, but if we want, we can check this out. This is a straw coat, basically. There's different types of armor you can pick up, and it's also a helmet, which you can see over to the right of the armor in my item box. And, uh, basically, if you get hit, this will just absorb, uh, damage, and, you know, it has a certain durability, like the sandals, so if you get hit too much, it'll break, and then you'll be left open to damage. Buying armor is a very good idea, because a lot of things like to hit you in this game, <laughs> so... I generally like to be, you know, full, fully stocked on armor as much as I possibly can. And when it comes to the amount of money I have, you know, maybe you could say it's cheating a little bit, but honestly, like, getting money in this game is basically just time-consuming. I really just wanted to have a second file prepared uh, just for this playthrough, so I wouldn't have to spend a whole bunch of time, you know, playing games and getting the amount of money I need, when really I could just have it, you know, at my fingertips whenever. So this just saves a little bit of time, it's more convenient, and uh, really, it doesn't give me, you know, too much of an advantage, because I would have had the money anyway, and just saved the effort of having to get it. Okay, so the second section you can see, you can always tell when you're crossing over because of the raccoon dog there. Uh, the second section of this one actually does not have a platforming stage, you're going straight to a boss. And uh, this one's definitely more complicated than the first one we fought. So what's going to happen is uh, he's going to bring down this platform eventually, there we go. And we basically just have to hit all these lamps. Um, this is another case where the money is really good, we also have to avoid the fireballs. Throwing money is really good because you can reach all the way across and you, know, you don't have to worry about positioning too much. So once you take off the outer ones, obviously the inner ones are now going to start moving. Well, okay, kind of hang on there. And uh, they're all starting to shoot fires. It's probably a good idea to get off. I don't want to be moving around while that's happening. And getting up on these side platforms really helps because you're at a perfect level to take out like some of these, uh, you know, whenever he jumps around, so that definitely helps. Uh, you can also hit these fireballs with money. I actually got a really lucky shot on one. And uh, then once we take out all these other kind of orbs, uh, the main guy's face will show up, and we can just pepper him with money, and he won't really do much to defend himself. No, he was actually dead. He just got one last jump off. Alright, so we saved the cat. He's a Koban cat, apparently. I don't really know what that really means, but <laughs> that's who he is. It's a band of ninja cats protecting Ido. It's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. 
So he's going to fill us in on the top secret mission, which is basically uh, the main goal we're going after. The Princess Yuki, the one and only daughter of the ruler of Edo, has been kidnapped. Searched all over Japan, think they know where she is. And she's been taken away by a mysterious group of masked men. They have special weapons that cripple their ability to change forms. So unfortunately, they just have to chase after them in the form of adorable little cats. You know, oh well. Alright, so they've learned that the uh, Otafu army have been known to kidnap women, so they have to, uh, <laughs> they just draw the conclusion they have to have taken Yuki, she has to be there. So, you know, like I said, story is very kind of bare bones at this point, but we have to go and uh, chase after the Otafu army and see if they've got the princess. That's basically what it boils down to. Wicked Kidnappers of Helpless People. That's a bad title to have, you know? <laughs> okay, so now we move on to Zone 3, which is kind of, like, random. I don't entirely know why this is placed here. Uh, it's gonna start out pretty much like any other stage. We've got this little uh, overhead section we're gonna have to be taken care of here. And uh, none of these enemies pose too much of a threat. These guys mostly just walk towards you. There's one type at the end of this bridge here, though, that uh, these guys right there, they will actually throw stuff at you, but, you know, it's very slow and they only throw in a straight line. They also never move, so uh, really no threat to you there. And now we get to go to an amusement park. Like I said, it's just kind of random. I'm not entirely sure why this is here. Uh, these guys really don't go after you. They kind of just walk around. Of course, they will hurt you if you run into them. And basically, the whole point of this section is just there's a bunch of buildings around, you know, this is where you can play games, I guess, where you can get some money if you needed it. Um, so it's, it's just kind of a little break. So, you know, most of these we're going to be skipping right on through, like I said, uh, the, main, the mini games I'm not going to be dealing with here in the main playthrough. So basically, we just uh, keep going up. There's also a nifty uh, little thing over here. Uh, you can see there's kind of the like the face in the hole things where you can stand and you know your uh, your face will be put in the hole there. So <laughs> he's a big sumo wrestler, or he's a you know Japanese woman. There you go. <laughs> so you know it's always it's always good to have a little fun. If you can't tell, you know, like I said, this game is very lighthearted. Okay, so these guys with like the the water buckets or whatever can be actually quite annoying. Uh, they like to kind of strafe to the side a little bit, and if you try to walk, uh, like, around them, they will just move their water buckets in the way and pretty much hit you most of the time. So, it can be tough, especially if you have to scroll the camera too far back, because they'll just, like, respawn at the top. Alright, so this is essentially the boss of this section. It's about as close as we're going to get to one. Um, you can really just walk past it if you want, whenever you have an opening. You don't have to kill it, but, you know, we might as well. We have to do some fighting in this section, right? Alright, there we go. So, you don't really get anything for it, it's just kind of there blocking the way. And then we can uh, kill these guys walking away. They're probably just tourists or whatever, but you know, we gotta kill them and take their money. And then once we leave the screen, that's it for this section. And there's the giant squid attacking a building back there. I don't really even know. had to skillfully pass through a haunted maze filled with tricks and traps. Yeah, I don't quite think so. I really wonder if that was supposed to be, like, a legitimate explanation. Like, that was really what was supposed to happen, but they just replaced it at the last minute? I really don't know, but... Either way, now we get to move on to the next real zone, zone number four. And this is where things do start to step up a little bit, especially in the side-scrolling section uh, of this one. It's, it can be pretty tough, so, you know, definitely have to be on your toes. And most of these enemies are fairly simple, they just run ahead in a straight line, you know, all stuff we've seen before. Uh, we've got another store here, I don't know if we have the next armor type. Okay, no, not yet. Actually, I could stand to buy some pizza, I didn't even realize I didn't have any. So we'll go ahead and just buy these three. It's it's a lot more expensive here, though, if you notice. Uh, it was like 100, 200, you know, 300 bucks for this one. So, 
I guess the later you get in the game, the more expensive that stuff gets, which is kind of a pain because you don't really get more money. So, you know, that kind of makes it tough to buy things at some points. All right, so these special buildings, I might check out a few of them. Okay, this is just another hotel, so we don't need it. But I will definitely be on the lookout for some of those uh, diary recording places, because it's always good to have a save point to fall back on, just in case things go terribly wrong. And this part here, uh, these, like, deer are kind of annoying, because if you kill them, you lose ten bucks. I guess they're like an endangered species or something, and you get fined. Uh, but they do really like to hit you, and they also have a big hitbox. Also, that guy that I just killed is one of the more annoying enemies in the game. We'll probably, yeah, but, oh man. <laughs> See what I mean? Like, they are incredibly difficult to take out. So, in sections like these where you kind of know they're around, it might be a good idea to just kind of lead shots in front of you uh, so you can hit them as soon as they appear on the map. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Let's just run away from that guy. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where the. I think this is actually just a judo place, so I'm going to. Uh, back out from there. I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, I'm not the most practiced at this game right now, so I'm kind of just having to feel my way around towns a bit, which is fine. You know, it's, it's cool to explore stuff. All right, this is a special area that just has a uh, store in another building. I think this store has the next armor. Yes, it does. So we're definitely going to be stocking up on those. So then we can buy the chain armor here for 150, and those will just replace our straw armor. Uh, you can also buy bombs, which were at the original store that I didn't really touch on. Uh, they're basically just different types of projectiles. They serve really no function. Throwing coins is all you need. So we will never be picking up any bombs. It's also worth noting that if you press select, you can kind of go into your inventory to see all the stuff that you have. Uh, you can see uh, it doesn't actually replace the old armor we have. We still have three chain armor and two straw coats. So, you know, I imagine that once the chain armor runs out, it would start hacking away at our straw coats. So, you know, it's always good to keep as much stuff on hand as you possibly can. Alright, this looks like where we need to be going. You can generally tell because there's these big doors. Also these signs, I'm not sure what they mean in Japanese. Uh, you know, maybe someone can fill me in if it's anything important or something funny. But, um, this is where we need to be heading. So we can start up section number two in this stage. And, um, yeah, the music here is also very good. I really like it. Okay, so this one, uh, its gimmick is that it has basically two different levels. We can switch back and forth between the background and the foreground, and we're obviously going to have to at some points to get along the broken floors. And it's also useful for avoiding certain enemies. There's gonna be some guys that roll, so, you know, it's really nice. They take, like, three hits to kill, and they just, they really don't even stop when you hit them, so you have to time it out pretty well if you want to try to kill them. And the gimmick here, SNES was always pretty proud of its Mode 7 stuff, so whenever we step on the Switch, it'll rotate the entire map around, which is always cool. I, you know, I liked how they did effects like this back in the day. And of course, bottomless pits, you do die if you fall in them. I believe those are the first ones we've come across in the game, so, you know, this is no exception from the old rule. If you fall in a bottomless pit, you're dead. Okay, so now we go into this part, and we're going to be actually flipping this room around twice in order to basically be walking on the old ceiling for the first time, which is a cool concept, you know, I usually like when they do stuff like this in games. So now the entire stage is upside down. At this point, you do have to worry about the spikes, but if you, wow, that was actually really close. Uh, but if you pretty much just go and don't stop, you'll make it through without too much trouble. And you can basically just crawl under these spikes by holding down. Gotta wait for this guy, though. Okay, jump over him. And then we go down like the arrows are pointing. And no, I don't know why there are, like, naked bouncing guys in these rooms. I, like I said, sometimes in this game, you pretty much just have to accept what it's throwing at you. You know, don't even question it. So kind of some more 3D stuff at work here. Uh, we got these pillars we can stand on, and if we stand on them, we can, you know, kind of go around in a circle. So a pretty neat effect. Uh, they did things similar to this in Super Mario World 2, uh, which that game probably did it better, but, you know, it, it at least works. So I think we got a health extension there, if I'm not mistaken. We also want to jump on this and then make our way up. 
Now we can jump off here, and you can see there's a door to go through, but don't go through it. It's actually a trap. Uh, you'll get sent back earlier in the level if you do that. You want to actually come over here to the left. There are a couple instances like that in this game, which is kind of a beginner's trap and uh, maybe a little bit unfair. We've also got slot machines going here, so we've got to avoid the bombs. That was kind of close. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I took like two hits. I took like three hits from that because I like didn't know what was going on. Uh, I wasn't able to jump because the spring was down, so you know it was keeping me from being able to do anything. No, I'm landed on the wrong one there. Yeah, sometimes. Oh wow. Okay, <laughs> I thought that was actually nothing. I didn't know that was a bunch of enemies. Okay, so we got a little bit of bad luck here in this room. Uh, but as you saw, I think it dropped money. Uh, it can also drop some life, so you know it, sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts. Okay, so the boss of this section is pretty simple. I don't know why I had the pipe out. We just gotta duck under that. Now we gotta hit these guys in the face. And then once one of them's taken out the ball, we'll just kinda bounce around. Uh, so this is easy to avoid. I mean, it's super slow moving. Okay, there we go. So now I guess their spirit will inhabit this big face. And this is still super easy, especially for just throwing coins. You basically just wanna stand to one side. Four hits will kinda knock it into its next phase. <laughs> that was a little closer than I wanted it to be. All right, now we got one where he's gonna try to kind of like smash the ground and get it spread out a little bit. Uh, but you can kind of influence in, you can influence his direction a little bit by hitting him. And now for the final one, every time we hit him, he's gonna get a bit bigger, and it gets a little crazy here. So you want to be right on the side, and when he starts getting big, just duck in the corner, and you're safe. And out of it pops Ninja Woman, yay. I love, I love that line, I am Ninja Woman. Well, I guess self-explanatory, you know? So uh, she was kind of checking out the Otafu army, so you know, we have somewhat similar objectives. Uh, looking into them for counterfeiting, which is, you know, completely different. They counterfeit and they kidnap people, so they seem like bad dudes. So we should seek the help of the wise man of Iga. And that's basically our next hint. Also, Goemon and Abisumaru watch fireworks a lot. You know, I guess towns are grateful. We probably helped them out a little bit, so that's cool. Alright, so yeah, unfortunately, that was actually the Otof Ot Otafu army's hideout. Uh, Princess Yuki was not there, but we did get the hint that we need to see the old wise man who lives in the village of Iga. Okay, so now we do zone five, and I think this is where things like kind of start to get difficult with the side-scrolling section here. Uh, some of these enemies in this uh, kind of overhead section can be a little bit of a pain as well. Uh, most of them are pretty slow, but these guys with like the baby carriages or whatever, um, you know, they can just kind of come from off screen and shoot you without too much warning. So uh, you gotta watch out for them. But these guys are no real trouble, they're super slow. So basically just don't stand in front of those, uh, the shooting enemies, and you'll be fine. Uh, there's also a hotel here, which is helpful sometimes if you're low on energy, which uh, thankfully we're not, so we can just walk back out. I'm telling you, that armor comes in real handy. You know, I got hit quite a bit back there, but didn't lose any life, so uh, you definitely want to make sure you're stocked up on that as much as possible. Alright, so now we have these holes where these kind of, I guess, like warthogs are coming out of. Uh, we want to try to get in that one while the guy's gone, because it's actually a really good store in here. And uh, this has got the next level helmet, so we're going to buy three of those. And we're also going to stock up on our armor. Okay, we only lost one. And uh, they also sell whole pizza here, which we're definitely going to pick up. And that'll now take priority. Basically, whole pizzas will restore your life completely if you run out. So those are super nice. And also, uh, like I said before, it's worth keeping as much as you can on hand. You can see we still have our old pizza as well. So now we have quite a lot of health recovery and quite a lot of armor, so we're in good shape. Okay, so we just head up from here, gotta avoid. That one can get you sometimes if you're not expecting him. And as we go through here, these guys are gonna lob bombs. Uh, the hit detection on this is bad because it basically just text, detects if the sprites collide. So even though they're supposed to be like way up in the air, if you just like touch the sprite, you'll get hit. Kind of a pain, but not too bad. Pretty easy to avoid. 